night, everybody, and welcome to Tuesday night Bible study. I'm so pleased to be able to say some things in relation to God's word again and, uh, you know, have us talking about this topic, Children of Light. I am as ever, brother Johnny and German Alcock. And as usual, before we get into the, the discussion and talk some more from God's word, we'll have a little bit of a song and a prayer. And then we'll get right into Tuesday night Bible study. Like a ship sailing out on a trip so rough and long, so far from shore, so Savior who brings us closer to his everlasting light. Let us pray, Lord Jesus. Thank you so much for allowing us to come together as always and uh, speak some more about your word and some of the things that we're able to do with you to glorify your name on the earth. Wherever it is that there is darkness or there are issues that we as your children can solve together and make better and allow your justice and your truth to be shown allow us to have the courage and the bravery to do so so that we have no you know lingering fear dread injustice or unmerciful activity that will cause us to degrade into areas of uh, too much sinfulness allow us as your children of light to come and shine forth in this kingdom with great glory. Amen. How is everybody doing? Thank you so much for joining us for Tuesday night Bible study. As ever, I am Brother Johnny and Jeremy Alcock, and this is the Hillshire United Church. We are a congregation of the United Church in Jamaica and the Cayman Islands. And as you can imagine, this is our Facebook page or our YouTube page. I'm sure where you're tuned in. And uh, also know you can email us or telephone us. We're also on Instagram. Some of the information in relation to these things are streaming below here. Please note that um, we stream Tuesday Night Bible Study every Tuesday at 7.30 p.m. 
And every Sunday, there is a church service that is streamed on our Facebook page at 9 a.m. But we also have other activities. Prayer and fasting on Saturday, 7 to 9 a.m. in the morning. And also, men and women's fellowship are available for you to associate with, learn some more things and grow in maturity with that specific gender. And there are different age groups, sorry, uh, group leaders, sorry, that you can reach out to for assistance with those things. Please also note that church school and youth fellowship progresses and brigade during the Sunday services. Please reach out to your representatives for each and get involved at whatever age group or whatever gender or whatever activity you'd like to get involved in so that the church continues to grow and we all mature together and uh, learn some more things about God and how to live our lives to the best of our abilities. So tonight we want to talk about children of light. It is a phrase that is taken from 1 Thessalonians chapter 5. But the reason it is there is because um, the Apostle Paul was writing that uh, scripture and those verses that we're going to concentrate on. He was looking at the way that our lives and the world around us can degrade or uh, uh, put itself down into levels of sinfulness that can be so degrading that it looks like it's darkness. But one thing about darkness is that it always seems darkness. These are two things I'm going to tell you to start off our talk. It always seems darkness right before the dawn is about to come or when the, the greatest point of light that you know which is in the sky, which comes up in the morning, starts. And darkness can survive not even for a second once it is that you turn on the light. I got a phrase from a, a book which has become a story which is on um, our TV channels as a movie called All the Night We Cannot See, which was a book written by Anthony Doerr. And if you don't find ways to realize that you are somebody who has been put on earth and has some meaning and is going around trying to do things for God. But do it in ways that are lasting and uh, purposeful and also has to show and bring justice and some goodness on the earth. Then, I mean, what? What other reason are we here for? Are we here to just accumulate assets and uh, look good? I hope not. Are we just here to um, show how better we are than somebody else? Or I hope not. Are, are we just here to um, eat the best food that we can and enjoy ourselves as much as we can and get as much happiness as we can? Sure. It is good to be joyful, but for those who don't have as much as they hope for, or as much as other persons who are much more well, you know, endowed, um, you can still be content with the things that you have. And you can still find enough joy in there that it spreads to you to go and do some things that are even more brilliant than what, than what you can see, because there's something greater inside of you. Greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. Greater is the light that has been put in you so that you can go and produce some things that are so glorious than the darkness and the issues and the ills of this world. Greater are the words that are poured out of your mouth that you can read from the Bible and rephrase and repeat and put as truth into people's lives than the things that are around that will all grow so strangely dim. Oh, yeah, oh, yeah. Are we, you know, going to concentrate on the light or worry about the things that are not so right in the world? I saw a video since we, where somebody was saying that, you know, around a certain point of the year, they realized that they started to get some headaches or they weren't feeling so fantastic. And they was worried, I guess they didn't state the reason what they were worried about. 
But I presume they were worried that something was going on wrong with them at those specific times all the time. And the person called their mother, and the, the mother said, why is it that you're concentrated so much on the things that are going badly? When all the other days you never complained to me, and obviously some good things were happening to you, and there were so many blessings. Are you allowing some of the blessings and the goodness of God to not come into your life with gratefulness? And then you're worrying about one or two things that occur periodically, and then you forget that you had so much goodness going on before. That is something we have to guard against. Because it comes from a place of uh, maybe it's a little bit of pride. Maybe a bit, a bit of uh, hurt from some past pain. Maybe a bit of need for perfectionism. Maybe a bit of um, worry that if we are, are not doing the same things as before, then we, we won't be approved or something like that. But we have to be careful. As we also spread our light and try to do good things, at that point when we it's not all honky dory and everything is hundred percent, that we still can find joy in the moments, or else we'll allow more darkness to come in. There is no greater oxymoron than uh, a world where there are some persons who have exceeded and gone past a certain amount of financial uh, security. And still have issues figuring out themselves or who they are or maybe even commit suicide do you know how many persons like that there have been i don't know to be honest but i'm sure you know what i'm alluding to there have been persons who have gone to stardom levels or areas where they have a lot and they still feel as if they lack or if they're they're not enough or they're trying to still prove themselves or you know become greater than what they can see and it causes darkness to come into their lives you see how i shifted what you probably thought i was going to talk about but it's multifactorial the darkness in this world is not only what you can see out here which you have to help to get better but how about the things that happen that cloud your minds or mess with your emotions? Are you going to be good enough with God to seek Him enough to be sure about who you are and be confident to go into your lives as children who bring light at all times? Or is, is the day going to be, well, Something bad happened today, I'm going to pour the lime juice over myself and act sour. I hope not. Because then you complain about the bad things and the issues that are around you. And then you forget that the light which God has poured into you is not shining into your own life. We are children of this earth. And that's the reason for which we're having you know, some of the issues that we have. Let me read from Psalm 90. Psalm 90 says this. I'm going to just read some short verses from it. Let me know if you're still seeing the screen. You're still uh, hearing my voice. And uh, you are able to correspond with me still. So on verse 90, verse 2, it says, Before the mountains were born, or you brought forth the world, from everlasting to everlasting, you are God. You turn people back to dust, saying, Return to dust, you mortals. Another uh, phrasing of this said this Should that, that phrase that says, You mortals, or return to dust, you mortals, said, Return to the earth, children of earth, or return to dust. Or return because you are children of the earth. I'll come back to why I alluded to this specific phrase. And then it says, A thousand years in your sight are like a day that have just gone by. Or like a watch in the night 
yet you sweep people away in the sleep of death. They are like the new grass of the morning. And I'll stop there. Because if you look very closely, all that this is alluding to is that God is the only eternal supreme being. He created us from the dust of the earth. That's what I'm alluding to when I said we're going to concentrate on that phrase. Return to dust, you mortals. And of course, if you come from the dust, and as it says in many funeral phrases, to the dust we shall all return. We have nothing to do but lift our eyes, our mouth, and lift our praises to the one who created us, and we have to come back to give an account of our lives to in the end. So if we're living our lives in a kind of, some of the ways I mentioned earlier in the preamble to this section, what use will it be when we go to the man who we have to give an account to for our lives? I'll also get to that when I read some parts of Matthew 25. And he said we were not spreading his light. It would have been almost um, counterproductive. You have one life to live. Don't be dissuaded or unfortunately also almost uh, tricked, so to speak, by other things that you may hear about how life progresses. One life. You have one time to die. And then comes the judgment. Are we going to live our lives in the way that God intends enough that at points when issues come up whether internally or socially in our sphere or in the world that we will speak the truth of the matter that we will be able to state and uh, hope, keep hopeful and, and working for what is correct and just or, um, or we will degrade into the darkness of what is around us. And if we can do that enough through our belief in Christ, I can guarantee you that at the point when we go to God, He will say very quickly, Well done, good and faithful servant. Because the truth is that those who are in God and believe in Him are not in darkness. You think you are because of the things that are going on in your mind and your emotions and also the things that are going on in the world. But as I said, concentrate on these two things. One, darkness lasts but only for a second until you turn on the light. Have you ever thought about that? And also, the darkness of the world cannot evade the light that God has put inside you. And those who are in darkness, you know, sometimes may seem to be overpowering or a bit a little more, I don't know, um, doing some things more than you or whatever it, it may be in your mind. But I can guarantee, because God says so, that in the end, the very first shall be last and the last shall be first. And the very people of God who are trying to glorify him and do what is correct are the ones who are spreading and doing the light in the world. You're not in darkness. There is sin and the consequences of it around the world. But um, that's just what you can see. But how about opening your spiritual eyes? How about opening the, the way that you view yourself? The way that you view the people who are around you? And also the way you view the world? And if you can do what uh, you know, a lot of the theologians call turning the world upside down, which is a phrase taken from Acts chapter 16, where the world has already its issues and some things going on. But you, when you go out, what you're doing is putting it back the way it's supposed to be. It's already messed up this way. 
But what you're doing is going in, creating some changes and some ways to think and mindsets that are more correct, removing strongholds, praying and uh, breaking the yokes and the strongholds and the principalities of this life and removing dark demonic elements and healing people and spreading the gospel of peace and truth and justice and mercy and goodness and then you turn the world back the way that it was meant to be if you can you know kind of view this in this light all of a sudden you know, the entire way that you think and view things will change because now you come with more hope you come with more um, peace in your heart and then it is that you will approach the life that you live with a grace that our people around you will wonder how is it that you behave so differently than than others and you tell them you tell them that the thing or the person who has changed you is Christ. And the darkness are the things that they see around them which they think is greater than them or going to overpower them is not greater than a God who is of pure light. Verse 1 of First Thessalonians chapter 5. No, brothers and sisters, about times and dates we do not need to write to you. For you know very well that the day of the Lord will come like a thief in the night. While people are saying peace and safety, destruction will come on them suddenly as labor pains on a pregnant woman and they will not escape. But you, brothers and sisters, are not in darkness so that this day should surprise you like a thief. You are all children of the light and children of the day. We do not belong to the light or night, sorry, or to the darkness. So then, let us not be like others who are asleep, but let us be awake and sober. For those who sleep, sleep at night. And those who get drunk, get drunk at night. But since we belong to the day, let us be sober, putting on faith and love as a breastplate and the hope of salvation as a helmet. For God did not appoint us to suffer wrath, but to receive salvation through our Lord Jesus Christ. He died for us so that whether we are awake or asleep, we may live together with him. Therefore, encourage one another and build each other up just as in fact you are doing. So if you are not sober enough, to go about your life being watchful and sure about who you are and where you're going and your purpose and how you figure out life and to bring some goodness and kindness into it then you will be very easily bombarded by the things around you with, which has its issues that's all the apostle Paul is saying you know? so you cannot be asleep like everybody else or drunk like everybody else you have to be awake and sober you can't be asleep, you have to be awake. You can't be drunk, you have to be sober. And then he says very plainly, repeating mm -hmm. some phrases from Ephesians chapter 6, that you have to put on the helmet of salvation. And you also have to have on the breastplate of righteousness. In these phrases in 1 Thessalonians 5 verse 8, it talks about faith and love as the breastplate. And it's just a different way to see if you are living a pure, flawless, perfect life in Christ, the exhibition of it will be your faith and love. And if it is that you are going to go about your life forgetting the hope for which you have been saved in, then the darkness will just come and engulf you on you your whole mind and emotions and your mindset and how you view the world and what's going on around you, it will all have its effect on you. But are you going to be continue to be hopeful? Are you going to continue to remember that you're saved by Christ who has redeemed you from your sins and also assisted to carry you to the greatness of some fullness of an eternal life to come? 
will you also remember that you should live your lives faithful to each other? Always telling the truth. Always being merciful, kind, just, loving, peaceable. Always concentrating on good things. Things that will make people realize the truthfulness, the honesty, the praiseworthiness, the honorableness of life. Or are you just going to concentrate on the negative things? Or the dark? Or the things that don't seem right? Are you going to honor others? Are you going to go about your life being gentle and approaching the things that you do in a way that will make people realize that you are encouraging to them? With reference to that is 1 Thessalonians 5 or 7. Christ did not die for you so that you are bickering and unpeaceable with your neighbor or so that you are so unsure of what's going on around you that danger is lurking or so visible and you are not even aware of it. In Jamaica, every day, there are three to four people killed by our statistics. Murder. I don't mean like, you know, somebody shot and they're injured and they're going to the hospital. I don't mean like somebody harmed and, and something stolen from them. Killed. We're not in, you know, Afghanistan or Iraq or one of the Middle Eastern countries that have wars or one of the places in the African countries. We're not a place who even produces guns. The majority of the cases of people dying are from guns. So if you look out into the world of Jamaica and either, you know, just go happy, go long, wrong, and uh, do your life, not aware of this, or even worse, be afraid of it, and not looking to say, this is something that can affect me. Then you then you'll be asleep, right? As the Apostle Paul said, it's almost like you were drunk, like drunkards in the night. So that is the reference for what he means by these things. You cannot live your life in a way that, that does not exhibit the God who you serve. Can you please? Look into where you are, what your mindsets and your attitudes are, how positive and hopeful you can be, how you are just and mature in your spiritual uh, feet, and how you go into the areas that are dark and bring light into it. Be peaceable, be kind, allow people to know what is the truth of God, assist where be, where conflicts ensue. And if you're like, you know, persons who are awake, see this issue which I just mentioned in relation to criminality. And ensure that you, even in a small way, be back against the darkness that continues to ensue. Now, in Matthew chapter 25, I spoke about this last week. There is a long tale of scripture in relation to three sets of people. Some who were foolish, some who were slothful, and some who were uh, just not doing the things that they should be doing. In relation to helping people and being merciful. And so in this latter one, in Matthew 25, where God starts to separate those who have been trying to do his light, versus those who are out in the darkness. We get this description of uh, sheep and goats. We'll get to that next week. But before we get there, we have this weird kind of parable about the parable of the bag of goats. Some persons call it the parable of the talents. And it's weird that God puts this um, uh, parable here. Because yes, you can understand He's saying you must be watchful and awake. Like he talks about those who are the five foolish virgins and the five wise ones. Then you should live your life sober and do some right things and bring some peace and goodness and love into the world, right? 
you can understand also that in the end, those who have not been uh, merciful to others and loving and kind and doing some things that exhibit the faith and love that he says you should bring, uh, there'll be a bad fate for them. But what is this about this talents and uh, exhibiting um, trust in the stewardship of the things that you have? Many people stumble here because similarly they like the person we're going to read who was thoughtful and decided to steward the things around them with fear and also in selfishness. And then God the master comes and calls the person wicked and lazy. Then you're going to have a problem with God. And it shows that how you behave and act in the kingdom, the spread light also comes to the things that you possess. And also your attitudes to your life. If you are going to be given some things and all the persons around you are trying to do some work and double and move forward in their productivity and their reaping of the harvest after they have sowed. And you are now, just like the foolish person, are going to come and answer what they have sold. And or worse, uh, not have accrued any uh, interest. And uh, um, and then presume that God will come and, and, and say, you are good. You kept what you had. Interestingly, God says that's, that's not the way we should be living our lives. What he has put inside you. It's not to be put over, a bushel to put over it. Nor should it be hidden in a room. Instead, it should go out into the world onto a mountaintop so that you can others around can see. It should go out and not be hid. It should be open so that people's eyes can be open to the fullness of the truth of God. And so your light must shine enough even in how it is that you steward the things around you. Again, this parable says, it will be like a man going on a journey. What will be like a man going on a journey? He's talking about the ending of things and the kingdom of heaven and his coming. Who called his servants and has trusted his wealth to them. To one he gave five bags of gold, to another two bags of gold, to another one bag, each according to his ability. Then he went on his journey. The man who had received five bags of gold went at once and put his work, money to work and gave five bags more. So also the one with two bags of gold gained two more. But the man who received one bag went off to the hole and in the ground and hid his master's money. After a long time, the master of those servants returned and settled accounts with them. The man who had received five bags of gold brought the other five. Master, you entrust me with five bags of gold, so you have gained five more. His master replied, well done, good and faithful servant. You have been faithful with a few things. I will put you in charge of many things. Come and share your master's happiness. The man with two bags of gold also came. Master, he said, you entrust me with two bags of gold. See, I have gained two more. His master replied, well done, good and faithful servant. You have been faithful with a few things. I will put you in charge of many things. Come and share your master's happiness. Then the man who had received one bag of gold came. Master, he said, I knew that you are a hard man. Harvesting what you have not sown and gathering you have not scattered seed. So I was afraid and went out and hid your bowl in the ground. See, here is what belongs to you. His master replied, You wicked and lazy servant. So you knew that I harvest where I have not sown and gather where I have not scattered seed. Well then, you shall should have put my money on deposit with the bankers, so that when I returned, I would have received it back with interest. So take the bag of gold from him and give it to the one who has dead bags. For whoever has will be given more and they will have abundance. Whoever does not have, even when they have what they have, will be taken away from them. And throw that worthless servant outside into the darkness where there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. It seems kind of um, unpeaceable and unjust, right? But the parable that Jesus is trying to show you is to show how, is, um, how you should act in patience and in faith and in self-control the person was acting fearfully and he was acting um in a way where he knew what his master intended 
which is for the seed that he sowed to spread out and grow elsewhere. He said so. He said, let me read back what the person said. I know that you are a hard man, harvesting where you have not sown and gathering where you have not scattered seed. If he knew this, why was it that he decided to hide the thing in the ground anyways? Have you ever thought about that? About how your life can possess so much goodness and so many things? And you decide to be selfish with it? And you decide to have a gift? For you, or you have additional time on your hands and you don't use it faithfully. Do we live our lives to just get up, go to work, come back, watch some movies, sleep, and then start the day all over again? Are we being productive and faithful with our time? Are we allowing the things that we have been given to steward to push itself out in the atmosphere as best as we can? be used faithfully and produce it even greater than what we have been given through it. That's our mandate. And it may seem unjust or, or rude, but um, what is it for a man who came on the earth and had uh, 12 main disciples, one who uh, betrayed him? And then in the upper room, we had about 120 people. And in 1 Corinthians 15, we hear that he showed himself to up to 500 people. And now there are 2 uh, billion or so Christians around the world. Uh, numbers may vary depending on where you read the figures. So if there's a man who is God, who has been doing this work and spreading the gospel at such a pace over 2,000 years, do you think that in your life, if you have been given the same spirit and the vibe of the light of God, then you cannot know it to make you have a faith that leads to the same darkness which you told you to come into the world to dispel? Why would you want to live this life in darkness and hurt and pain and worries about the things around and the challenges of it? And then end up in the sorrows of the punishment of outer darkness anyways the two do not equate but people unfortunately do so anyways are you going to realize that your child of the earth who has been created by god and has been put into this world to spread your light and will you very plainly live your life with such truth that he will say to you in the end, well done, good and faithful servant. You have been faithful with a few things. I will put you in charge of many things. Come and share your master's happiness. It comes with some love and some faith. And it comes, quite frankly, with some bravery to do what we must respect the things that we can see. If you are living your life and trying to do it for Christ, let us pray tonight and continue to put the hope into the world from which we came so that we can continue to push back against the dark elements of this world spread god's light heal those who are about us and continue to move away the demonic activities of the enemy let us pray lord jesus thank you that over time you have bring brought us into places that are dark because it is through the challenges that we see greater about what our lives intend and our mind and our mindset allow us to bring forth some more beauty and some more hope and some more truths that will lead to light. If we did not have the darkness or the negative parts of life that combat our wills and our minds and emotions to fight into temptations, then we wouldn't have the positive, which is your greatness, which allows us to go into beauty 
and to glorify your name. We thank you that even in times that seem destructive, negative, hopeless, tiring, and dark, that you still have an eternal destiny for us which pours itself out in light. Amen. Thank you everybody for tuning in for Tuesday Night Bible Study. I am as ever brother joining Jeremy Alcock. Please do check out uh, other things going on on the page uh, on Sundays and also any other thing uh, from the activities from the week of church next week. Please do note that we'll discuss more about that parable about uh, the sheep and the goats and uh, the people who helped those and were merciful. And we'll describe that as left or right. Um, as you can imagine, it will be a discussion about, let me try to project that exact phrase. And, uh, and, and so you can understand where I'm going. In verse 32 to 33 of Matthew 25, it says, all the nations will be gathered before him. And uh, he will separate the people one from another as a shepherd separates the sheep from the goats. He will put the sheep on his right and the goats on his left. He will put the sheep on his right and the goats on his left. And um, I hope and pray that we all will choose the right way. Come in there and go. Thank you all for tuning in for Tuesday Night Bible Study. And please have a great evening. Please have a great rest of your week until we see each other again with our church or Tuesday Night Bible Study. And remember to go out into this world, spreading your light in the beauty of the mercy, the justice, the love, the humility, the peace, and the hope for which God intends. Thy foot to be moved.